On today's Coaching Coordinator Podcast, we share ideas on how to build a strong special teams culture, starting with the belief and mindset that must be the foundations for special teams excellence. Then some tangible, specific examples of how you can strengthen buy-in, create excitement, and recognize your elite performers. The coaches on today's podcast joined me for the Lawrence First and Goal Clinic or the virtual summit and shared their ideas on creating player ownership on special teams. All of these are available on courses and we have a special offer for you. If you are interested in how to build your special teams culture, I'll share that at the end of the podcast. Let's start with the head coach at Blue Valley State, Tony Coxham. In this segment, he emphasizes the importance of understanding and performing your role on special teams as a player. One of the big things about special teams is is getting everybody to really understand what that, uh, how important it is to be in that uh, in that unit. And here's a uh, kind of a, a statement that I use all the time to let guys understand their, their role and how important it is. You got you always got to understand your role and perform it like it's the most important role on the team, because for you, for your that individual, it really is. Um, so whatever your role is on your team. You, we're asking you to do it because we feel you're the best at it. And when you take that mindset to say, if I don't do my job the best that I possibly can, we will not be successful as a team. And that's not just on special teams. That's in home on the whole realm of everybody understand how important the quarterback is. And if he doesn't do his job the right way, your team's not going to be very good. Your team's going to fail. But that scout team uh, tackle that scout team that uh, player on the punt return team he's got to have that same mindset if I don't give my best effort if I don't do my job the right way our team is going to fail if everyone has that type of mindset about their role and it's not an ego they're not saying your job is more important than anyone else's but your job is most important because that's what you're asked to do if everyone takes that type of mindset um, that just uh, raises the level of your of your team and you're going to have a pretty doggone good football team. South Florida special teams coordinator Dan DePredo feels the magic potion is creating belief. He points to belief as one of the biggest factors that has allowed his units to be successful wherever he has been. All right, number one thing I stand for uh, when I talk about special teams is belief, right? It's belief. I, I think everything, and, and that's in coaching in general, right? Whether I'm coaching here, I, get, I coach with the, the secondary, I coach the safeties. Right. So everything that you do, you have to create belief. And, and I think it's uh, it's interesting when you get into that. Right. So how, how do you create belief? I, I'll be honest with you. I think it's very simple. Right. Very simple. You just take this magic potion and you just pour it on everybody in your meeting room. No, that's not it. Right. There is no magic potion that just creates belief and creates it for everybody to see at all times and know that there's there's that belief right there all the time right? That you can be able to see and work with and do all that. Um, but what, what I need you to know, though, is that I believe you can create this potion, right? Without having it to pour on, right? And you can create it by how you do anything is how you do everything. You have the opportunity to create this all day, every day throughout the entire year, right? You get to create the belief with your players, how they see you run a meeting, how they see how you organize things, how they see you interact with people, how they see you walk up and down the halls, how they see you borderline be a little crazy when you talk to them about special teams, right? And get them going, get them excited. The energy and effort that you bring to every single day, whether it's a, a weight workout, whether it's a, a class check, whether it's academic tutoring, whether it, whatever it is, the energy that you bring to that will help you create this magic potion, right? That gets you to create that belief. Collegiate and high school coach Christian Vital cements his player belief and attention to detail by a recognition and award system, which he discusses in this segment. So here's an award system that I use um, and some stuff I've added on recently. Um, so I reward my players with pull tags. I order those myself every year. I have a guy that supplies them and I have special operations coins that I'm getting made. Um, so these guys get rewarded with this stuff. Um, we do helmet stickers that I have made with that logo in the middle of the coin that you see. Um, photos in the locker room, social media. Unit eats first. So the special teams operation unit of the week, they get to eat first. So we're doing that. We got payday candy bars and, and pictures in the locker room. I have big banners that we make, T-shirts. I really try to make the kids, hey, this is important. 
Okay, this is a saying that uh, Coach Vermeil told me, and I love it. And, and I've seen this so much on football fields, it drives me up the wall. When you witness great performance, technique, behavior, don't not, and you don't recognize it right then in front of everyone, you distinguish it. You take away that moment and opportunity to show what everybody, what great performance or attitude is. And on the flip side of that, when you see it bad, and you don't correct it on the spot, you endorse that behavior. And I'll tell you, I've seen that so much. And it, I shut my mouth sometimes because it's not my, my uh, area to tell a coach what to do. But, man, I've seen that happen. And if you don't correct it on the spot, this, this saying, I, I love this saying. I use it in business and in football field. Princeton University is about excellence on and off the field. And that certainly applies to special teams. Special teams coordinator Mike Mendenhall shares their philosophy, which builds their culture, the award system that recognizes their excellence in performance from identifying what he calls a crafty vet, and shares their give them three action anytime they have a performance worth noting. What's our identity? Uh, I always you know, bring this up in, in, in day one uh, meeting, intro meeting, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we got to figure out who we are. You know, every year, every team's a little bit different. Uh, your personnel changes. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we, we have to understand what we want to believe in and, and what our identity is, what our core values are. So we here at Princeton uh, with special teams, selfless is one key word for us and core value. It's about the team. Everyone has a role in special teams. Uh, everybody has to find their role and then take ownership of that role, okay? So uh, obviously special teams, there's some selfless in there. Guy, guys have to, uh, you know, whether you're a starter on defense, offense, uh, you're a backup, whatever it may be, everybody understands that they have a role in special teams and they got to take ownership of that. Got to be reliable, reliable. Ability to execute assignment technique on a consistent basis. And you got to show that. You got to show that in practice. You got to show that and the ability to communicate that uh, uh, in meetings and, and, and transfer that to game day. Willingness to get better every rep, every day. Uh, someone your teammates can count on, right? That, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for guys to be reliable. Okay, if you cannot show me that you're, not a, you're an unreliable guy, I can't trust you, okay? I can't put you on special team units, period, okay? And guys understand that, and that's stressed. Uh, very often. We've got to be smart. Okay, we understand concepts and fundamentals that we're teaching. Uh, we want to play with discipline and control, okay, and then decision making. Okay, we've we got to be smart in our decision making, uh, whether it's blocks, whether it's returners. Uh, we have to be disciplined uh, and have some control on the football field. We want to be aggressive, we want to be fast, we want to be physical, but we have to play with some control as well. And we've got to understand that. Toughness, right? Uh, Mike Tyson uh, quote here, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? At the end of the day, we got to compete. Uh, willingness to compete, willingness to keep our composure at the same time. Things are going to happen. Things aren't always going to go our way. Uh, we have to have some mental toughness to uh, respond to that and keep our composure. Okay, willingness to strain. Okay, we got to fight. We got to fight our butts off. Um, uh, you know, uh, we just got to compete that win, on, win that one-on-one -on -one battle. And then finish. Everything we do, at the end of the day, things, uh, we're not going to be perfect. Uh, we're not going to play with perfect technique all the time. Uh, we're not going to, uh, uh, you know, miss assignment, whatever it may be. But if we finish and, uh, you know, we can erase mistakes, we can, uh, we can give ourselves an opportunity to win a football game. Kind of a, a cultural thing here that uh, I kind of built on from years past, a uh, crafty vet. You know, we, we talk about being a crafty vet here at Princeton, and I think the guys have taken really uh, a big ownership in this, and they have a lot of fun with it. Uh, they look forward to it. Um, it gives them something to strive for. Okay, and a crafty vet is a title earned by a player over time here with contribution, production on special teams unit. Okay, represents our identity. Okay, someone who represents our identity that we just talked about, understands uh, situation football, communicates with his teammates and coaches to promote success. Okay. 
earned by a player's ability to execute techniques, understand concepts at a high level of detail. Okay. Displays reliability and consistency with assignment decision-making. Okay. Lastly, this player must display a high level of mental and physical toughness. Okay, so, uh, you know, a lot of times this is core four guys. Okay, sometimes, it, you know, it's not always core four guys, okay, who, who developed that, that title of crafty vet. But uh, I think it, it just has created a, a culture here in our special team, something to strive for. It's, uh, it's an incentive, recognition, uh, a way to reward or incentivize, incentivize our players. Okay, just, you know, we'll post this up in meetings and uh, crafty vets, guys that are embracing our identity. Okay, we'll, we'll just post their picture up. Uh, we'll put it in the locker room. We'll put it up in meetings. Okay, give them some recognition. Guys who are giving that or representing our identity, embracing it every day. Uh, competitors, uh, they have that attitude, that mindset that we're looking for. Uh, reliable, selfless, tough, okay, playing smart football. And if guys get promoted, okay, guys that get promoted to being a crafty vet, right? Guys who uh, over time, it may, be, it may be week five, week four, okay, guys develop into a, maybe a core four guy or, or he bumped up his role uh, that week or, you know, step, stepped in for somebody and did an outstanding job and took ownership of that. Uh, those are guys that are embracing our identity. And uh, we want to, again, uh, recognize those guys. So we'll put this up in meetings as well. Incentives. How do we incentivize? How do we reward? Uh, we go player of the week, scout team player of the week as well uh, on special teams. Uh, so I think that's important. We have to recognize those who may not be on varsity or travel team. Um, we have to give them a role. Uh, we have to uh, reward them and make it important. And, uh, and so we do that with high importance with uh, both the scout team and, and player of the week for each game. Uh, we call it Tiger Top. It's uh, gear for production. Okay, guys who uh, may be special teams player of the week, scout team player of the week, uh, guys who just played at a high level on special teams and did some really good things. Uh, we'll reward them with just uh, gear or what we call Tiger Top. Okay. And then earning the right to be a crafty vet. Right? I think that's uh, an incentive. That's a culture, you know, kind of a mindset we created here. Uh, you know, crafty vet, like I said before, just goes into those uh, core values and that our identity here on special teams. Uh, core four guys, okay, we're going to reward that, incentivize that, and then win the key was something, uh, uh, you know, win the key ground is our motto here. And, uh, uh, you know, each player, uh, we have a, a key, we'll hand out a key um, to a player who represents that or has done some good things. So just different ways to incentivize, to reward, uh, create that, that the importance of special teams here at Princeton. Uh, give them free is something I picked up uh, along the road here in my coaching uh, career. Um, anytime, if we're in a meeting, anytime a player is doing something well or we do something well as a unit, uh, guys will say, get your boards out, or I'll say, get your boards out. And we're going to give a guy three. We're just going to bang the board uh, or, or the uh, or the table three times for a guy who's done something well and has been productive on film, uh, on game day, in practice, and in whatever it may be, drill work. Uh, we're going to give them three. So uh, I think this is taking on its own uh, uh, life in, here at Princeton in our meetings. Guys will come in. And they know we've done something well in a game, or they've done something well on the practice field, and they say, "Get your boards out." Okay, so uh, our players have taken ownership of that. It's been fun. It's created a, a really fun environment here, and uh, you talk about players living it, talking it. It's 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 great when guys come in our meeting and say, "Get your boards out," and uh, they know what's coming if we've done something well, and uh, we're going to give them three for that. And it's just another way to keep guys' attention in meetings, you know, when you're banging on the table. And, you know, it just creates a fun environment in there. Justin Lustig's special teams room is a prime example of player buy-in and fun. He gets creative in the different ways that he recognizes their special teams plays and creates ownership. 
Setting weekly goals and awarding daily, weekly, and yearly performance is a big part of the special teams culture that Coach Lustig creates. Now the associate head coach and special teams coordinator at Vanderbilt, Coach Lustig shares the goals they track as well as how they recognize their top performers through social media and other ways. Things that we do um, during spring ball and during our, our camp season, we do a special teams player of the day. So when uh, the players come into the meeting, this slide's gonna be up and whoever is the player of the day, we'll, have, we'll find some old funny pictures of them or, or really good pictures of them, performing some uh, uh, technique on film. We'll take a still shot of it and put it on the screen. And then we call those guys during the day and ask them what music they want to have on the uh, in the meeting room. So when they come into the meeting room, they're going to be listening to the, whatever their song is. Their pictures are going to be up. And then I'll always open the meeting up with a, a play from them that they had in the previous practice uh, that warranted them earning the, the player of the day. So that's something that we do. Um, another thing is just the awards and how we do that during the season. So we really only give out four awards during the season. We give out a hammer award which is to the guy who obviously has the best hit during the game. Uh, the Courage Award, if you look at that slide right there, the capital C and, the, and the, there's a capital C and a capital G. That's for a reason. We, we, the Courage Award is, is what we put out to the public, but Courage is, stands for, uh, the C and the G stands for Cajones Grandes or the Big Balls Award. So it's the guy that's playing with the most heart and, and the biggest set of nuts. Um, MVP award, obviously MVP of the game. And then uh, I think this is important too, is recognizing your scout team and we'll have a scout team MVP. So the other thing that I would add to this, and I think it's really important and has gotten a lot of traction for us the last couple of years is when we award these guys, we award it to them on our Sunday meeting post game, uh, after our game on Sunday. And we will also post this on social media. So I will tag all these guys names on it. I'll tag our football account. And we'll post it on Twitter and post it on Instagram. And those guys get some love and, you know, their, their hometowns get to see it. And they get to retweet it and the friends and family get to see it, which I think uh, has helped us as well. So another thing that we can do. Um, and then there's a physical award that we hand out with these things. So you can see the guy there with the cojones grandes. We make him wear that to every meeting during the week and we have him hang it into his locker room. So that's obviously the big balls. And then the hammer award, there's a sledgehammer. And then we'll write their names on the sledgehammer uh, for whoever wins it each week. And at the end of the year, whoever's won it the most gets to keep it. So those are our awards. A couple other things that uh, I'll share with you. This is our goal board. Very, very simple goal board that we use and it's posted in our locker room. You know, obviously the first one is win. The second one is no penalties. As you can see, this, this uh, clinic was from two years ago. So um, uh, some of this stuff goes back two years, but no penalties. Um, we obviously didn't do a good job there. Had you know, we want to finish each game with no penalties, explosive plays, um, and all these things are in reference to not necessarily a number, but in reference to do I have more explosive plays than the opponent? Is my field position after kickoff better than my opponents? Is my net punt better than my opponents? Uh, we want to have no ball handling errors. That's huge. Whether it's our, our holders or our, our returners, our punters. You want to pin opponent inside the 20 at least two times, whether that's on kickoff or on punt. And obviously 100% PATs and field goals um, anytime the ball is, uh, is snapped inside the 20. We want to make sure we're 100% on that. So that's our goal board. Hopefully you picked up some ideas to help you start camp off right in creating a strong culture and buy-in from your players for special teams. As you head into camp, Preparing how you will create buy-in and recognize your performance can go a long way in helping you win more games this fall. The ideas shared here provide a great foundation for you to build upon. All five of these coaches have courses which are available in a bundle for just $24, a huge savings at 77% off on CoachTube. The link for this is in the show notes. The coaches give the visual along with video examples of what their culture looks like when it is performing on the field. Again, get that link in the show notes. Be sure to follow all we're doing at coachandcoordinator.com and follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski.